Hey everyone, it's Ann Manera and welcome to another Color Along. Today we are coloring from Color Along Variety Coloring Book Volume 19 and today's topic is watercolor pencils. I'll be using a Maze Rock watercolor pencils today. So let's get started. Today's Color Along is all about watercolor pencils. I'm using this set of a Maze Rock watercolor pencils and it's a 20, well I think it's a 36 actually. It's a 30 set. I had to count it. Anyway, in addition to uh, the watercolor pencils, you'll also need a little bit of water, not much, and a couple of paintbrushes or even just one paintbrush. Doesn't really make a difference. Pretty small uh, to be able to fit inside of the spaces. So when I color with watercolor pencils, what my favorite thing to do is, or my most comfortable thing to do, is to use the pencils, let me just get myself situated here, is to use the pencils like I'm coloring with just a regular pencil, just a regular uh, colored pencil. And then I go back in with my water when I'm all done and I start to spread around my pigment. So let's get started. The best way to learn how to do this is to just do it, right? So I've got a couple of different greens. Let's see what I have here. I have a dark green, a light green, and a medium green. And I'm gonna start with those. Just let me hold on and hold on a second while I give Scarlet a biscuit. Okay, so I'm going to start out with this dark green color and I'm going to start out with the grass. So here is my blade of grass and what I'm going to do is just press really hard, do a really heavy uh, pressure in this bottom corner. And what I'll do is I'm just going to show you what I'm what is going to happen for the whole page and then I'll go on and color the entire um, page first. And the reason why I do that, this is a really key point here, is the reason I do that is because you wanna be mindful of where you're going to put your hand because the paper will be wet. Of course, I have a piece of paper behind here. So I've got that whole blade of grass covered. I've gone from heavy pressure at the bottom corner to light pressure. And now I am just simply going to use a paintbrush with some water and spread my my pigment around so I'm just gonna dip a little bit we don't want it to be too wet and the other thing that we want to remember is that we don't want to have a puddle on this page so I'm just starting from the darker area and dragging my water up dragging the the water up top up to the tip of the top of the tippity top of the blade of grass and what that will do is just give it a watercolor look. Now, you can also blend your colors. You can mix colors. Um, and I'm just going to kind of alternate with my different colors of green for these. But you can certainly add uh, a dark green and a light green. Or you can add blue and yellow pencils on top of one another. And then once you add that pigment, they will definitely... Um, they will definitely blend and create the color green. Here is just this medium green color. And again, so I'm just going to go, my method of this, or my plan of attack here, my plan of action, and hold on a second while I tell my dogs this is the last one. This is the last one, Scarlet. This is the last one, Paisley. That's it. I know you're laughing, but it's the last one. All right, so we've got this medium green. So my plan of attack for this page is to do heavy pressure to light pressure on all of these blades of grass alternating between my three different color pencils. We have dark green, light green, and medium green. And that is how I'm going to uh, color this page. So it's kind of my plan, only, and I only have this kind of as a, a set plan in my head right now, um, mostly because it is it has all of these blades of grass. So I don't usually plan out my pages as, as much as uh, some people think, I don't know, are you a page, a color plan? Do you plan your colors out before you begin? Let's use the light green on this one in between those two dark blades of grass. Because when you look at, um, when you look at grass, you know, crawling, crawling around on the ground, you know that it is not all the same color green. There's very co various colors. So this would look nice with various colors. Um, Here's kind of a, a just a whole solid color right there. And then 
this is this was a dark green so I'm gonna go with a medium green here and again heavy pressure as I'm at the corner of the blade of grass and as I'm making my way up I'm lightening my pressure so let's go with a dark pressure here or a dark green color here and these pencils are not um, named but they're numbered so this one is number uh, 047 And then for this one, I'm just going to do a light pressure on this particular braid, blade, braid, blade of grass. And these pencils sharpen really well in my electric pencil sharpener. So, but they they have a very soft lead because they're a watercolor pencil. And you know, I also like to use watercolor pencils dry. Does anybody else do that? You don't have to use them only with water. So here's my dark green color. I'm just gonna keep alternating here. Now, some people take their pencils and they dip them in water. I don't really like doing that. I don't know if I just don't like the motion of back and forth, back and forth with the dipping. Um, I guess I don't like how the pigment starts to get a little funky. You know, it doesn't look really good, but not a fan of that method. So I'm using this method. Which one do you use? Is this your first time? Let me know in the comments. Is this your first time coloring with watercolor pencils? Um, and if so, what brand, if you're, if it's not, what brand, or if so, what brand are you using? Are you a, uh, which brand are you using? I have this brand, this Amaze Rock brand, but I also have uh, Prismacolor watercolor pencils and Maped. Does anybody have Maped products? They were around, uh, years ago when I first started coloring books and um, I don't really hear about them very much anymore but they have a really really good product what I like about those pencils are that um, or that product is that it's the same color across the whole pencil the whole all the products um, so by that I mean that it's the same color so if you have uh, golf green for example which I know is one of them uh, you'll have gulf green colored pencils. You'll have gulf green markers, that type of thing. going to get my friend Scarlett to lay down. Hopefully she will. Maybe you can get her to do that for me, Paisley. Right? So this is a, dar a darker green here, of course. And then I'm going to put a dark green behind here. And then as I move along, we've got this medium green here, and I'm gonna pop medium green between here. So I'm, I'm definitely alternating the colors. I could have used two colors, I could have used four colors. I chose to just kinda uh, use these three because I do want to use a different green for the stems of the cattails. And then for this guy right here behind this dude, this dude flam flamingo dude, I'm going to use um, this dark green. This page can also be found in my book, Flamingo's Coloring Book, which is available on Amazon. I'll pop a link over in the description of this video, um, but hopefully uh, you can check that out. This is a fun book for kids, adults. Uh, it's just a fun, funky, um, funky little coloring book. Whimsical theme, whimsical little uh, flamingos just kind of hanging out in this, in this particular page. I was gonna call it a potato. In this particular potato, in this particular page, um, they're just kind of hanging out with some cattails. I don't really know if flamingos do hang around with cattails. Do they? Do they hang out amongst cattails? I don't really think they do. I don't know. Anyway, in the book, the flamingos are set amongst a variety of settings. Maybe some settings that you may never ever imagine a flamingo to be, but why not? That's what makes it fun. It's not realistic. It's a fantasy thing. It's whimsical. It's fun. So color alongs are continuing to meet here on YouTube and new videos get posted every Monday and Thursday uh, right here on my new YouTube channel. And they are posted by 10 a.m. Eastern time. Let me know in the comments what you think about that schedule that's happening. Um, I'm actually uh, working on and about to release a um, color along volume, color along variety book volume 20. 
and volume 20 um, will also meet on Mondays and Thursdays. So, uh, so far there's been some good feedback, but let me know. I want to hear what you have to say too in the comments. Um, put some white green back here. Right now I'm gonna use this color, which is a very dark green. It's called 052, we don't know why. And now for these stems, I'm gonna tell you right now, I am not going to add water for these stems because see how skinny that line is? That would be a little crazy. So I'm just gonna make sure that they have a nice, heavy, heavy, heavy pressure. And it's a nice dark, because it's really just like one line. Um, this is a good page to color with markers also. And of course we've got those little legs of that flamingo and I might do the same for that with some orange. I'm gonna make his legs orange. To me a flamingo's legs are orange. I've never seen a flamingo in person, I don't think. I was watching something on, uh, on YouTube the other day because I feel like that's all I watch is YouTube, but I was watching something on YouTube and um, there was a, a video with a whole bunch of flamingos on the beach. And um, I don't really think that they were, the video showed the flamingos close enough for me to really realize what color their legs really were. But we're definitely gonna go with the pink. So here's number 029, and I'm gonna go with this dark pink around uh, this neck. And as I come around the side of it, I'm going to, do, and up to the head, I'm lightening up on my pressure. Now you could also, which I will do with this, um, with the, this feather right here. I'm just going to color a just a little bit of pink right there. That's it, just there, and then I, that's going to be dragged. So what I'm trying to do is get this dark pink to be near the edges or the corners of the flamingo or the illustration again here. This is a good flamingo color actually. And now that's just enough right there. That is completely enough to have um, the color moved on in here too. So I'm just gonna add this really heavy pressure of this particular color, just like I did with the other one. And now I'm gonna use this lighter pink for this guy because he looks like he's a, I don't know what he looks like, but he looks like he should be smoking a cigar. Heavy pressure here on the head, a little bit in the middle just a little tiny bit, a little touch of color. And then this girl, I'm gonna call her a girl. I think this is the mom, the dad, and the kid. It'll be a girl. Maybe it's a boy, I'm not sure. Heavy pressure here in the crux of the neck. Well, the neck is bending. And light pressure here. And now for this one, for this particular, uh, giant feather up top. I'm just going to color the whole thing in. I like my flamingos to have orange legs. I don't know why, but I've got a good orange here, number 20. And I am going to go with a heavy, heavy pressure, just like I did to the, um, to the cattail stems. Again, here, don't you love how they just cross their little legs like that? I think that would be like, what is it called? A contortionist that does that? when they cross their legs like like that and they're just all over the place. I don't know what that is called. Let's give it a little bit of an orange beak. A little bit of an orange beak, orange beak. And then I'm gonna use some yellow for this section here. Do you live where flamingos are? I don't, I don't live where flamingos are at all. Um, as far as that little crown on that woman's head, we're going to go with purple. And again, I'm just going to give it a little bit of color in there because then I'll be able to, uh, to move that around. And as far as this guy's hat, it looks like it should be blue. And I mean, look how crummy these pencils can be. So I'm just going to give it a little bit. Just a little bit, a little, a little something, something, as they say. Now for the cattails. I'm going to, I thought that was brown. I'm gonna go with this brown color, 094. And I'm just gonna color a little bit. I'm gonna do a little bit of a dark color with that little stem. And then kind of on the side and then lighten up. Little stem, little stem, whatever that is. Is it a stem, a tip? And then up. 
Now, I want to make sure that my, uh, my background is done also. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to color the entire background with some blue and then go over it with a brush. So I think that the key here is to make sure that you know where you're popping your hand, right? Where you're placing your hand because it might be wet. So that's why I really like to just kind of uh, just do the whole thing first. I think the same thing would happen with um, if you were coloring a page and you had, um, you were using maybe a blending oil. Some people use this bar when they're drawing or they're painting and it's like a, it's like a stick that goes across and it basically raises your hand. So your, the, the meat pot, meaty part of your hand will rest against that. I'm really not a fan of using that. So I'm not going to use it. Uh, 077 is my next color and I want to make sure my page is flat 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 and I am just going to do this on color it on the side so I get a good uh, blend of color in there good even pigment it's kind of a, a purpley purpley blue I guess And for some of these, you can actually, you can actually uh, kind of move the pencil around a little bit so it, it hits inside there, sits inside those spots. I don't want it to be like um, scratchy. I don't want my sky to be scratchy. This is also a good uh, background to do with makeup maybe. Or just watercolor paint. You could just go back into this with watercolor paint also if you uh, felt like you wanted to get a smoother area. Let me just move this over a little bit, kind of pivot my page, get this down. Now, it doesn't really make a difference what it looks like right now because once I get that water in there, that's when the magic is going to happen. All right, so now I've got my brush. This is kind of a medium brush. I don't even know the number of this. This has paint on it. And I'm gonna start over here on the left side. Um, I'm right-handed, so I'm gonna move from left to right. And I am just simply taking a little bit of water, kind of wiping it off at the side of the bar of the jar of water that I have, and just moving that pigment up and down, just moving it as we move along. I'm just going to hit every blade of grass. We already did this one, so I don't need to touch that one. and just pulling the water up. Reminds me of um, the paint with water books. And it, it makes me think that you could create one maybe for a kid, color some pages with some watercolor uh, paint, watercolor pencils, and then give this, I'll give a, just give a brush to the little kids. And then they will think that it's just like magic to make your own your own paint with water books. Do you ever do that? You're trying to do something and then uh, you end up, uh, you end up uh, like, you know, making more work for yourself. Just go buy a paint with water book. <laughs> I would love to create a paint with water book, but I have never figured out a way. I know somebody, a couple other people that had it um, as a mission in their publishing life uh, to uh, paint, create that type of book. Now, if you notice, I did those cattails because I wanted to, I didn't want to lean down on it. So now I'm kind of uh, going from top to bottom. And you may be wondering, why don't I just take one gigantic brush and just move along the whole page? Well, that will mix all the colors. So we want to make sure that we stay within each area. Now, this wing of this flamingo, of this flamingo remember I only put a little bit of color right there in that corner and look what it did. Now we're going to move on uh, to the body and see how it just kind of blends. Here's some more pigment that we've got going on in that side and just kind of blend it all. Here's the little hat. Here's this dude's hat. And I'm not gonna do anything 
um, to the beaks. I'm going to leave them or the yellow part of the beak either. So this is another section too. There's that flower, that uh, feather. And I just kind of blended it around into that feather. There's the guy's body. Here's some grass right here. Did I get this one yet? Yeah, I already did. Here's behind his little leg. I'm not touching his leg. And here again, this blade of grass. Blade of grass. And then this guy, let's get this guy next. Now for the background, I probably will use a bigger brush, I think. I'm not sure actually. We'll see how this brush works out. And then just kind of move that pigment around. We've got this blade here. And then we've got this one. I mean, I really am being very conscious of making sure that I don't have a lot of water on my brush. Because if not, it'll turn into a puddle. If you wanted to print out this page on maybe some um, uh, watercolor paper, it would be even better. So now I'm going to move on to this. Well, this is much purpler than I imagined this would be while I was using it. But look, I kind of like it. Now see this part right here? It's almost like you have to scrub it for all of that pigment. If you really wanted that to be very um, smooth, then you could kind of like push it down. But I kind of like the texture that's being created, even back here, back here. Look at that, isn't that amazing? Of course, I'm running out of water on this brush, which is why you might want to use a bigger brush. But I like the method that I'm using. And maybe you're coloring and you just don't feel like getting up. <laughs> that ever happened to you? Just don't feel like getting up. To live with everything in reach. Would that be a dream? Wow. How crazy would that be? Now look at that. I got a little bit of a mistake there. I know you're not supposed to point out your mistakes. Do you point out your mistakes? Or do you just say, that was supposed to happen. That's what you're supposed to say. It was a happy accident, as my friend Bob Ross used to say. Happy accident. Okay, so here we are. Did he say happy accident or was that happy trees? Oh, brother. Oh, brother. Okay, I'm leaving the bottom white, actually, just because I feel like it. I'm going to kind of make that represent, like, I don't know, just some water or something. And that's it. There is our Flamingo page using Amaze Rock watercolor pencils. Thanks so much for watching. Catch you later.